Hello all, how are we doing? Hope you are feeling a little bit happier uh, and cheered up a little bit from our piss poor performance at Norwich yesterday. Um, hope the 2000 fans had a safe trip back. Um, not the day you wanted, not the day we are wanted. Um, another poor performance and what have you, and just what you want. Now, when you're in a, a current run of form, is top of the table Leicester, who are going to be smarting from a defeat at the weekend as well, um, looking to get back on track. So. Um, but just before we get into the preview video of the Leicester game just wanted to give a big shout out to a subscriber on the channel Ray N who's having uh, a major surgery on Tuesday just want to say hope it all goes okay for you mate um, hope you're on the road to recovery soon and uh, I hope it all goes well so all the best to you um, now I just wanted to touch on a little bit of the current situation before we get into the meat of the preview video now you know you might think I've got in for Speakman and KLD I really haven't and um, I just speak as I find just try and give me honest opinion on things as how I say things obviously from the outside as a fan Um, but I just wanted to have a look at a few things and, and explain you know the reasons why I think things are gone wrong at the minute now whilst I do thank you know Speakman and KLD for what they've done so far you know they got us out of league one a great day out at Wembley won the playoff final in 2022 <clears throat> totally changed the days you know the club round and got us back on an even keel from the days of Donald and Metron you know we'll chalk and chase from there but the issue that I've got at the moment is the fact that I don't think they're in a position or, or that they've got the know-how to take us forward um, now Speakman at the start of the season said this we want to be putting out a team that can be challenging at the top of the league no one is satisfied with getting into the playoffs while it's a great achievement in the first year back we have to keep being successful and we have to keep improving so that was Speakman at the start of the season was talking about going for top two however what we've done in the transfer market and what we've done with managers doesn't back that up now only a few weeks ago KLD came out and said that Sunderland fans have to be realistic we have to be patient you know and we have to be a little bit sensible of where we are so you know who do you believe you've got the sporting director saying we're going to challenge for top two you've then got the, the owner saying some of the fans need to be patient and have a sense of realism so you know they're straight away not singing from the same hymn sheet that's going to not on effect all the way down the line and that's now feeding into the club um now like i said this is just my opinion from the outside um so if, if we come back to alex Neil, so you know i got us out of league one came in as a as a, as a you know as a temporary manager would you see it but he he had ambitions of, of doing well in the championship now we left arguably for money you would see shit on us but ultimately it was because he, he wasn't going to be allowed to bring players in that he wanted now when i went to stoke and didn't do a very good job the players he brought in didn't do an out and they were in the you know they were towards the bottom of the league when he got the sack however we didn't know how things would have panned out if he was still here but that's why i left then roy Keane. You know, it was all set to be announced. It was all done and dusted for them to last minute for him, him to turn us down. Why was that? Again, I'm just reading between the lines that he wouldn't work with Speakman, wouldn't work with the model, and wasn't allowed to bring either his own staff with him or players that he wanted. We then got Tony Mowbray as another temporary manager. However, Tony Mowbray massively overachieved last season, got us in the playoffs this season from pre-season he was saying that we needed a centre forward that the, the players we were, we were buying were for the future would need some experience that never happened we're getting into what it was 19 games of the season he's had enough he's then criticised or he spoke out about the model and, and how it hasn't been working you know and Speakman being the man he is power mad was sacked Tony Mowbray and then from there it's been downhill ever since and um, the top managerial targets that we had you know all these managers like to will still and what have you never never materialized and why was that because they weren't allowed to bring their own men in the own coaching staff um and they wouldn't work with the model now again speakman being the person he is would not allow them to bring the bring the backroom staff or the coaching that that we had because he wanted his click behind the scenes the likes of dodds and proctor and all them to be still at the club and didn't want them out of a job even though they could be the cause of the problem now michael beale comes along he's now then a yes man for speakman he's desperate to get back into management he's yes oh i'll, I'll do what you say christian I'll, I'll do all of this 
and look where we ended up 12 games three months we had to sack him and now we've got Michael Dodds in charge we've put him in charge till the end of the season and from what we're seeing so far it's very similar to his first spell in charge where we're awful to watch um, you know we've got knee tactics knee, knee so that same clue of what we're doing um, we're free fall in the league the football it's, it's awful to watch it has been since Tony Mowbray left um, we're a one man team as being proved now Jack Clark's out injured you know we're toothless weak a, a disinterested lethargic squad that, that lacks quality um, with too many players that are guaranteed to play with no competition for places now <clears throat> I know you can point to injuries you know the likes of Clark Roberts and what have you Alicia certain being out but if the recruitment had been better would have had a stronger squad would have had stronger you know um, stronger depth in the squad and, and what have you now I just wanted to have a look at this so if we look at the transfers in 2023 2024 and you tell me that speakman and the model isn't the issue now on screen you can see these are our signings again just my personal opinions of the signings that we've made since January last year now you can look on there and I've rated them all out with 10 down the right hand side there with the exception of Pierre Ekwa who's proven to be a decent sign they give me a out with 10 and Joe Bellingham you know I've criticised them on here time and time again week in week out that's purely because he's guaranteed a place he's undrottable he's a young lad he's got to develop but we're playing too much but Speakman for whatever reason because of this Birmingham click, click and knows the family he gets played every game no matter how he's playing how well he's played how bad he's playing he's undroppable he came off yesterday with five minutes to go when he was miles off the pace um, but the rest of the signs Lil Hadji 3 out of 10 didn't out we sold him on Joe Anderson he's now shipped out on loan Geldhart on loan didn't have a strike in the playoff Jensen Sealed looks a decent player 7 out of 10 Emir 4 out of 10 never seen him play don't play to his strengths Triantis he only played 2 games 3 out of 10 Bradley Dack complete waste of money Um been injured when he played a few games 2 out of 10 Mienda we paid a million pound for played 8 games shipped him out on loan to Hibernian Nathan Bishop never been seen I think he's played one game played one game don't know what he's like hasn't been given a chance over Patterson again no, no matter how well Patterson plays Bishop's never been given a chance El Sheesh again he's played 18 games most of them have been off the bench show little glimpses of what he can do but again not really done to prove and not really shown how good he is in the league 4 out of 10 Burstow a complete terrible signing you know he's played 17 games he's got one goal shocking why he didn't go back to Chelsea in the January transfer window I don't know probably because we knew we weren't going to get anybody else 2 out of 10 Rosian has probably been out of the centre forwards we have the one who's shown the most likely to go on a run of games but again he plays one game he's dropped the next doesn't get a run on the side 6 out of 10 Pembelia coming back from a, a massively uh, a massive serious injury what I've seen him so far looks miles out of his depth and when I gave him PSG and there must be a player in there somewhere but he's shown nothing of that kind of ilk yet 3 out of 10 in January Callum Styles, like I said yesterday he's a league one player we've got him on loan to ask the lad for a st step up to championship level to help us push for the playoffs is a massive ask um, too early to judge but from like from like what I said yesterday the two games he's played doesn't look an improvement on what we have Hjelda has come in and done decent in the five games he's played 7 out of 10 but again he was suspect yesterday woeful defending for their goal and, and Mundell again too early for the call he's only played a, hand, a few games looks decent looks pacey but yesterday again was was too negative was terrified to try and go past his man and ended up coming either inside or going backwards or sideways so that to me right that our transfers there since January last year tell me that the recruitment and the model and Speakman is the root cause of where we are now I guess it could be coming from KLD Speakman's got a budget to work to but this model of developing young players and selling them on is not good for Sunderland it's not going to get us anywhere it's not going to get us out this league simple as and then players that we've, we've signed there 
are not good enough for the championship yes they might be good in a couple of years time but you need that spine of the team through through the middle experienced players to help these young lads on we haven't got that we've got nothing we've got no leadership on the pitch we've gotten out we've lost Danny Bat we lost Pritchard we lost Stewart you know why you would get rid of your player of the season from last year Danny Bat at the back you know to accommodate Luke or nine it was not a centre half you know it just doesn't make sense like I said it all points to KLD and Speakman being the root cause of the issue refusing to be flexible last year we massively overachieved which probably didn't work in their favour thanks partly to Tony Mowbray and Ahmad carrying the team in the second half of the season that's why we overachieved you don't replace Ahmad because it's imp impossible to replace a player of that quality we felt lucky getting him on loan it worked out you know he was absolutely fantastic for last season when we didn't get him back we were always going to be struggling but you should have been looking for other players to try and fill that void and the players that we got are nowhere near that quality now you know we're now we now have no manager we're in free fall in the league we've lost the last four games we're nine points from the playoffs nine points from the relegation zone and me you know like i said yesterday i'm sat here a worried man i'm now sitting here and i'll be looking at the results of teams below us not above us you know the 11 games that we've got left you can see here we've got leicester southampton qpr cardiff blackburn bristol city leeds west brom Millwall, Watford in the final day against Sheffield Wednesday now I've had again just my opinions of, of where I think of what, what points I think we'll get I can only see us getting a maximum of 9 points in the remaining 11 games now where that, that takes us where that get, lets us finish it'll be in the bottom half but uh, you know, I'd like to know your thoughts on, on what I've just said there you know, do you agree do you disagree? There's still a few people out there, or quite a lot of people there, who who still back KLD and Speakman, which is their opinion. You know, we're all welcome to the own opinion, but that's just my personal opinion that of, of why that I think this current situation is down to Speakman and KLD. They're refusing to move. They're refusing to budge. And uh, this is where we've ended up. But let us know what your thoughts are on that little piece now like I've said I'll be focused on the, on the teams below us now what you didn't want when you're on a bad run of form in the situation we're in is the top of the league table the top of the league team to come rock up at the stadium light however you know they are on a bad run themselves they've lost the last three in the league they did beat Bournemouth in the FA Cup last week um, in between that little bit of a bad run but they got beat off Middlesbrough they got beat off Leeds and they got beat yesterday off QPR which was a massive upset but QPR since their new manager, I think Sifientes has gone in there again. QPR are getting a good new manager. He's proved a difference. Another example to, to Christian Speakman and KLD of what you need to do in this league. Now Enzo Maresca is in charge. He's he's got a, done fantastically well with them this season. Now I know they've got the squad and got the funds, but he's got a seventy three percent win rate with them this season, which is fantastic. Um. And now another being a bit of a bad run, run, but they are still top of the league. You know they're top of the league by three points. That was that's massively reduced from where they were, and the likes of Southampton, um, Leeds, and Southampton are all now breathing down the necks. And the end of the season is going to be really, really tight and really interesting for to see who gets promoted out of them top three. Um, but they are top of the away form table as well. You know they've they've only they've took thirty six points, uh, thirty eight points from seventeen games. Um, so it's going to be a massively massively difficult game on Tuesday as we know if it wasn't already they've got quality all over the pitch you know they've got the likes of Harry Winks ex Premier League um, Casey McAteer who's a good young player um, they've got three players in double figures this season again what you need in the championship is players scoring goals from all over the pitch they've got Keenan Dewsbury Hall who's got 10 goals Jamie Vardy even though he hasn't played very much he's been a sub most of the season he's got 10 goals Steffi Mavadidi again 10 goals so that's you know 30 goals have come from three players we've got Jack Clark who's got 16 is it next top goal scorer's got four I think it is just shows you again all this leads back to Speakman and KLD and the, and the issues that we're facing this model is not working now 
they'll be looking at Tuesday to try and get back on track against us for for, for you know for absolute certain. You know, they'll be coming up here expecting to win. Now, I'm at a loss how how we'll play what team Dodge will pick, what tactics will play. So I'm kind of wasting my time um, with the team I would pick because, like I say, uh, the likes of Job are seemingly undroppable. Um, but, you know, here goes. This is the team that I would play and I would pick. Um, but what do I know? Um, but this is, where I, this is where I would do. So I'd have Patterson in goal. I'd have Trier Hume as a right back. Dan Ballard back from suspension at centre half, along with Jensen Silt. Leo Hilda at left back. Now I would play Luke O'Neill just in front of the back back four as a defensive midfielder to add some bite into that midfield. Can win headers is, is is decent in the air. I'd have him playing just behind Chris Rigg and Dan Neil. Chris Rigg when he came on yesterday looked tremendous. Now when that was only fifteen minutes, but he looked composed. He was getting on the ball at sixteen year old. He he was playing some lovely balls out wide. For me, I'd give him a run on the side. So Chris Rigg and Dan Neil on the on the wide uh, outside I'd have Abdullah Bar who again looked when he came on yesterday made things happen he was getting at least full back and he was putting crosses in the box exactly what Emeya needs I'd have Emeya as centre forward Russian I'd have him playing from the left hand side as kind of a, you know a left forward that's the team I would pick now we know for a fact what will happen tomorrow it'll be the same old Ballard will come in for Sealed who will be shafted out the side and that will be the same team Samedo will probably be dropped he, he's, he, he'll have had one game he'll be dropped Russian will probably be battle front and it'll be Mundell and Barr that'll, that'll be playing um, with Ekwa in the middle so based on that score predictions like I said in, in numerous videos I hate backing us to get beat but I, I don't foresee anything changing and I, I'm going to go for Sunderland nil, Leicester 3 um, like I said they'll be smart from the weekend they'll come up with you Maresco will have them fired up and I, I don't think we'll be able to step up an early goal and it could turn toxic at the stadium tomorrow and it, it's only a matter of time before you know these that the the anger is directed at Speakman and KLD it's only a matter of time um, it's going to be interesting when the season ticket prices come out whether we'll have some kind of false promises come out before they announce the ticket prices but they're going to get a shot next season I think because there'll be quite a few people staying away based on what's happened this season I'll be amazed if they get the amount of season ticket loads what they've got um, this year um, but under the shirt competition like I say get your score but it comes in for, the, for the, the, the Leicester game in this video to count towards the shirt competition um, the leaderboard looks like this after yesterday's game the top 10 so Kip Vader's on 36 David Williams on 32 Kenneth Allen 30, Alex Dixon 21, David Maynell 21, David Edwards 19, John T 14, Brian Green at 12, Man of the World 12, Ian Banks 11, Peter Smith 11 and Christopher Mr Jones has got 10. So like I say, get your score predictions in, let us know what your thoughts are on the on the video, you know, on what I said earlier, you know, I'm a tartan sense, I'm a tartan load of shite. Um, people have, have kind of said, the kind of backup what I've been seeing on the previous videos so but it's, it's always interesting to hear what you've, you've all got to say um, please like share and subscribe if you don't mind um, we're doing amazingly well this year uh, with the subs and it's it's only going to keep on going up I'm, I'm hoping so but have a, you know, hey, still having a good week like I say all the best Ria hope you all goes well until the match review video hopefully that we're getting a decent result against Leicester but with the way things are at the moment I'm not holding out much hope but until the next time thanks for watching take it easy stay safe and we'll speak soon ta -ra.